I just showed you one of 2022's best selling cars in South Africa. In fact, let me rephrase that. I just showed you number two best selling car in South Africa. That is the Suzuki Swift. The one that you're looking at right now is the bigger sibling, the Baleno, which we reviewed just a few weeks back. And after living with this car for a week, I'm not shocked that Suzuki is the third best selling car manufacturer of 2022 in the passenger segment. I mean, they've outsold a lot of brands in the passenger car segment. The only brands that outsold them was Toyota and VW. Toyota coming at number one and VW coming at number two. Suzuki sold over 47,000 units to come at number three. If we are to look at the new car sales as a measure of the piece of the pie in the market, Suzuki is holding around 8.9% of the market share. That's a lot. And when you're looking at those 47,100 and something units sold by Suzuki SA, 17,200 were actually Suzuki Swifts. And that's why we're going to be focusing on it in this video. But before we even go far, let me welcome you to 2023. If you're watching this video, it means you're alive in 2023. Congratulations on that. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sibua and I appreciate that you're here with me today. So, as it might be the reason that you hear the Suzuki Swift crash test results, that's what we're going to be focusing on. And this video is less about opinions, but a lot more about facts. So, the 2022 Suzuki Swift crash test results were recently released by Global NCAP. NCAP means New Car Assessment Program. They assess it for safety, independent of the manufacturer. What NCAP aim aims to achieve is to give you the results as to how safe your vehicle is in an event of an accident. Or should I say, how safe will you be if you were to be involved in an accident in that vehicle? If you want more information on how NCAPs work, you can go check out our first video, which was the Haval Jolion that we've done on how safe are you. In that video, it was more in-depth. We've explained a lot about NCAPs and you can go check out the Haval Jolion as well, how it fares compared to the Mercedes EQA. Otherwise, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below and also a link to the global NCAPs website because they have more information on NCAPs and more cars as well, you can go check them out. Let's jump to the Suzuki Swift results now. The test that you saw now is called the frontal offset test. This test, there's always arguments as to whether it's the most dangerous or the full frontal crash is the one that is dangerous. Full frontal is where you're just going straight into the object in front of you. And this one is a little bit to the side, maybe like 40% of the car and the way it impacts. Others are arguing that it, it provides less protection, especially with the impact that it's doing on the side. The picture of somebody in front of us presents the results of what's likely to happen in an event of an accident like this one. The colors are easily explained. Green is good and then red is poor and everything in between. So when you're looking at the picture on top, because those are the results of this kind of an accident. Looking at the feet, I don't think you're going to be walking out of this one, especially if the impact is on your side. Because when I'm looking at the driver, it's something else, like it's poor, poor, poor when it comes to the feet. But the passenger side, which was not the impact side in this case, they didn't say much about it, which probably there was no impact. But I would believe that it's better to see it green than nothing. And when you're going up to the legs, you can see that there's adequate protection for the driver and the passenger as well is just green. Everything is good there. But when you see that how the impact came in, you can see where it happened because the driver's thighs are all marginally protected and the passenger is only suffering from the side of the impact. Then when we go up to the chest, uh, the driver, yeah, I think that's a problem because then now it's just weak. It's just almost close to poor. And I think impact on the chest is the one that is causing a lot of problems for a lot of people. So yeah, that area is very much concerning. Looking on the passenger side, I think it's okay because it's adequate protection. That means the airbag is doing its job and the impact was not on their side so i would think that that's a good thing i guess 
so you don't want an impact on your side in this car the head and the neck it looks like everything is green so you're good to go there all right on to the next one happens you're hit from the side and there's nothing much to explain there but when i looked at the clips i was a little bit worried especially because the doors were detaching from the car especially on top i don't know if that's some form of protection or not because when i'm looking at the results they're quite surprising especially because i saw the head bashing against the window as well but i see that the head is green when you're looking at the top right figure here it's green but the neck is not rated so i don't know what's happening there but when i'm looking at the torso area that is the torso right it's concerning because when we looked at the front impact on the left the chest is suffering and on the side as well the same area as well is also suffering i'm worried about this area on the side also in front as well because this is a very sensitive area anything goes wrong there we are probably out so the side protection test was only limited to this one the pole test was not done because there are limited features actually close to none because the side crash protection in this car side head curtain airbags are not there side head airbag it's not there side chest airbag is not there side pelvis airbag is not there so i guess they just felt that it's not going to yield positive results but like i was worried about the doors it looks like that thing that happens with the door detaching and so on it's not necessarily a big concern because when you look at the bottom 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 left you'll see that the side impact protection through the doors it's stable in this case because structural they said yes but the body shell itself especially in front they are very much worried about it because they're saying it's unstable and then we go into another area which is the child protection in this case it's very very important for you to consider your children especially when you're going to be buying cars and traveling with them all the time in this case they use the dummy that is similar to an 18 month old and a three year old in the cars the seat type used in this case is the britex roma geo plus that's the one that was used the q 1.5 and the q3 representing the smaller child and the bigger child in this case looks like the isofix installation assessment it did well that's what they call the crs installation assessment child restraint system they didn't give us a pictorial summary of what happened with the kids results but in their comments they said the child seat for the three-year-old was installed forward way facing with isofix and top teeth and was able to prevent excessive forward movement during the impact while it offered good protection to the head and marginal protection to the chest the 1.5 year old seat was installed in a similar fashion but what they identified is that it shows poor protection to the head and chest that is worrying for the little one what they identified though with the installation and the system is that they were working well they didn't have any problems with that it's just that protection for the little one might be a little bit of a concern for you so what's the overall score for suzuki swift Suzuki Swift's crash test rating, it's unfortunately one star. That is one star for adult protection and one star for child protection. This means that Suzuki Swift unfortunately falls into the category of the lowest rated cars in the country. So it's that time where someone might be asking themselves whether they should buy the Suzuki Swift or not and they're just thinking maybe i shouldn't maybe i should after eyeing it for so long and this is one of the best selling cars there must be a reason for it and i have a theory right i give you information so that you can make an informed decision an informed decision doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to get something it means that you get it with the right information in mind so that you don't get lied to no one should lie to you that the suzuki swift is one of the safest cars on the road because it's not it's really not but when i'm looking at cars at this price point and i'm considering safety i mean it's it's 
cars are playing around the same level. I mean, it's not easy to get one of the safest cars out there. Looking at the Grand i10, the Renault Quid, they are rated two stars, which is just above the Swift. And I'm looking then at the Picanto, it's like three stars. But the car that has like a high rating compared to the cars at this price point is the Toyota Agia. That is four stars. That's actually a lot because even other cars that are bigger than that car, they are rated like three stars or so. So that car, if you really worried about safety and you want a car at around 200,000, that's the car that you can go for. As to whether it's going to give you more value than cars like Swift, I doubt it's going to do that because when I'm looking at the Swift and I'm comparing it to the Toyota gear inside and out, nah, I think the Swift is still going to take it. With that said, thank you very much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Please stay safe. I am out.